Hi y'all, today we're going to be using ChatGPT to learn about houseplants. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's see what ChatGPT has to say. So tell me about houseplants. So yeah, houseplants are grown indoors. They can help purify the air, increase humidity, and improve overall well-being. And some list out some popular types of house plants. So it says that they're e relatively easy to care for, which is sometimes true, and they can be grown in a variety of conditions. But yeah, so it's important also to research specific needs of each plant. And then, oh yeah, this is a helpful comment where it says that it's important to make sure the plant is not toxic to pets or children if you have those. Alright, let's see. So I am considering getting a new house plant. Do you have any recommendations? Probably didn't spell that right. Yeah. So let's see, there are a lot to choose from, it's thin, so it gives, tells us what some of the easy ones are. So like snake plants, yep, those are definitely pretty hardy. Um, spider plants, I haven't personally had one. Pothos, yep, those are definitely pretty hardy. It says, yeah, interesting, it notes that all of these are sort of good for purifying the air. And then, so it's easy plant, yeah, it's hardy, similar to a snake plant. Chinese money plant, so I personally haven't had one of those, and then Dracania. Yeah, so I think I have one of these, and that plant is pretty hardy as well. If it tells you that um, these ones are good for low light, but I guess um, snake plants and ZZ plants can also tolerate direct sunlight as well, it's just that they're pretty hardy. And so yeah, and then interesting, it uh, brings up this, keep in mind, the plant you choose should not be toxic to your pets or children. <laughs> so it's interesting that it keeps bringing that up. Um, so let's see, let's ask a slightly different question. What are good house plants for beginners? Let's see. Well, it's spider plant again. So, pothos, so it's giving similar plants to previously, and there's snake plant again. Yeah, interesting, it's giving slightly different advice. It's not talking, at least for the spider plant, I wasn't talking about the air purifier, but it is for the rest of these. <laughs> interesting, it says that the Chinese money plant is small and cute, and has been trending lately. And then ZZ plant, yeah, it's very high on the the effective air purification of all of these plants. That's interesting. Uh, but this time it doesn't tell us to watch out for our pets and our children. Oh wait, no, there it does, right there. But yeah, and then pay attention to the own plants need. Okay. So that's slightly useful, but it's, it seems like it only cares about these, um, what is it, six or so plants? So let's see. What if I ask which house plants are good for bright windows? In case I have one of those. Probably going to get succulents and cacti. Let's see what else we get. We get the African Violet, and then Ficus Benjamina, Boston Fern, the Jade Plant, so that's like a succulent, and like Cactus, um, Lemon Button Fern, String of Pearls, and then Slipping. Yeah, interesting it says bright and indirect light for a lot of these. 
bright indirect light for cacti it says direct light interesting it says indirect light for most of these let's see which house plants can handle direct Lots of thinking here. Okay, so that took a while. Let's see what it says. Succulents. So aloe. And then other ones. I'm not exactly sure what they are. Um, so cactus. Yeah, it said previously that cactus could handle direct light. Snake plant, which it's interesting that previously it said that snake plants. Oh, yeah, so there it says. So low light and direct sunlight. And it's high on the air purifier. So a dragon tree, which is a type of dracania. The jade plant, which it previously mentioned. Oh, it says they prefer bright indirect, but can tolerate some direct. I mean, like, this is sort of just like a, a sun liking plant. See, spider plant, so it says it can tolerate some direct sun. But. Okay, yeah, the lemon tree, that makes sense. Citrus plants um, like lots of direct sunlight. Let's see. Okay. So I'm interested in my Clancho, or sorry, my Croton plant. Let's all ask about Clanchos and Croton. Clanchos and Crotons handle direct sunlight. Okay, so yeah, that's definitely true that they can both tolerate direct sunlight because I keep my clancho and crotons in as much sunlight as I can get them in my apartment. So yeah, the clancho is a type of succulent, so yeah. And then crotons, some direct sun, but not too much. But I mean, I mean sometimes people like seeing the different, the faded leaves. But yeah, I mean, a lot of people just put, put crotons outside too, so I mean, they can definitely handle direct sunlight. Yeah, this is interesting, it says to gradually um, acclimate your plant to sunnier conditions, which is definitely good advice. Okay, let's ask about some plant care. So, my fiddle leaf fig dropped all of its leaves. Um, can it be saved? <coughs> so what should I do for my fiddle leaf fig that dropped all of its leaves? So it says it's not necessarily a death sentence, which is good, and that these plants are finicky, which I would say is definitely true. These are finicky. So, now it's just listing out the conditions that it likes. Um, I want to see if it's going to tell me like that I should, you know, consider adjusting the conditions or, you know, if it's underwatered, give it lots of water or overwatered and let it dry out. But it looks like it's not going to say that. Yeah, so it just says what the conditions are, but it doesn't give you any tips about how to adjust for having, you know, like it be too dry or too wet or something. So, okay advice, but not the best. Um, what about my Ming? What? 
Aurelia is losing leaves. What should I do if my Ming Aurelia is losing leaves? So yeah, so it just tells me things to consider with the conditions. Alright, so the plane is getting the right amount of light and move it if necessary. Yeah, and up here it's sort of said like you may need to move it around. Um but yeah. So it's okay but not super detailed. What else it's saying? Humidity. Yeah, pass, so just what the conditions are. Shock. But then it mainly just focuses on proper care and conditions. And then it says if it doesn't, you may need to consult a nursery or a horticulturist. Many areas are definitely sensitive plants. So, like it's decent advice, but it could go um, further to helping you troubleshoot. Let's see. How can I get my plancho to bloom? So, it's thinking. What it should tell us is that clanchos need about 14 hours of darkness to bloom. Okay, so, see, it's sort of just describing clanchos here that they have flowers. It says getting them to bloom is easy. So, here are the tips. Okay, so light. They like bright, indirect light. So it says get four to six hours of bright and dark light each day. Temperature. Like, cool. So it's just giving us sort of care about the clan show. Um, so yeah, but it's not telling us how to get them to produce flowers. Let's see. They're short day plants. Oh, here we go. So, on the fourth bullet point, it's telling us that they need so 12 to 14 hours of darkness during the fall and winter, and yeah, and so clenches are more likely to bloom during late winter, early spring. Yeah, but then this is all just general care tips. Okay. Oh, well, let's see. Next question. What are the easiest plants to propagate? So, I like this question a lot. So, it says, if you can propagate them, then you can take the plants from cuttings, and you don't have to use seeds. So, pothos is definitely easy. Snake plant, it can take a while, so it's not necessarily the easiest. The spider plant, because it has offset, it's definitely pretty easy. Philodendron is sort of similar to pothos in its hardness, so that's definitely right. African violets says you can take a leaf cutting, so that's interesting. I didn't know that. So jade plants can be propagated from stem cuttings and then rooting them, and similar to succulents. So that's definitely true that they can be propagated, but they might take some time. And then ivy can be propagated from stem cuttings and rooting them in water. So it's saying it's similar to pothos and philodendron. I didn't know that about ivy. Yeah. Oh, it's interesting. It says propagating plants can be a fun and rewarding experience, but also tricky. And then research the specific needs. It's always telling us to consult outside experts. Let's see. What about if I want to grow edible plants indoors? So what edible plants can I grow indoors? Because there are many, and so we might need either lots of sun or grow lights. Like the herbs, yeah, I think herbs are pretty easy to grow. They need a sunny window. 
microgreens. It says they're easy to grow. I don't know, never grown microgreens. Salad greens such as um, lettuce, arugula, and spinach. So I think that's right. Those aren't sure. Peppers. I think peppers are going to be harder to grow because you need lots of light. And tomatoes are also going to need lots of light. So it says you need a sunny window or go like strawberries. I don't never grown strawberries. Or pea or sprouts. No. It, says you can, it says you can grow broccoli and radishes indoors. Interesting. And then, so it says it's going to be funny, fun experience, or it can be tricky. And then, yeah, so it always tells us about how plants have different conditions. What about if I'm going away for vacation? So how can I keep my house plants from dying when I go on vacation? Let's see. So he says it can be a bit of a challenge. That's not good. <laughs> Here are a few things we can do. So water your plants before you leave. Use self-watering system. So I've used self-watering system so far. Um, okay, using a wick. So that's definitely helpful. So then this advice is just sort of trying to keep the plants humid and conserve water, which I could see being helpful. But a plant setter, this is definitely helpful if you can get someone to water your plants. A plant globe, so similar to a self-watering system. It's interesting that, and then a irrigation system. So these are sort of the same thing as um, number two up here with the self-watering system. So it tells us that in sort of three different ways. And then it says, move them to a shadier spot. Um, so, because they'll use less water if they get less sunlight. But I guess you have to make sure that your plant can tolerate the um, shadier spot, which it might not like. And then, interesting, keep an eye on the weather forecast. So, know what the conditions are. And then, leave a mister to keep the plants hydrated. But, I mean, it doesn't tell us what to do if it's going to be hot and dry versus cold or wet, though. But then, okay, this is interesting. So if you have succulents, then you can be um, more sure, or there's less risk for leaving your plants for a vacation. But if you have a fern, then it looks like it's gonna be trickier. What about this? How many house plants is too many? Can you have too many houseplants? So, there's no set limit. That's what it says. So as it says, the number of appropriate plants depends on how much space you have in your room and your preferences. But too many plants can lead to overcrowding, which can make it difficult to properly care for the plant. And they're more likely to attract pests and disease. I guess, but I mean, if you're taking care of your plants, you have a lot of them, and that's probably fine. Can make a room feel cluttered and overwhelmed, which can be overwhelming for some people, I guess. But if you like having lots of plants, then that's probably fine. Um, just find a balance for yourself. So, yeah, I know it's sort of going in lots of different directions. Maybe it's just being over cluttered or finding a balance. And then consult with a horticulturist or someone can recommend the number of appropriate plants in your space. Anyways, but this is sort of like off tangent choosing plants. I was just asking how many plants is too many. But a decent. Alright. So, let's end this and let's have ChatGPT write a short poem about houseplants. So, green and lush, a touch of life, house plants bring the outdoors inside. Splash of color, fresh of, a breath of fresh, a natural beauty that cannot hide. With leaves that reach and stems that climb, they bring a sense of peace and pride. A touch of nature in our homes, a connection to the earth that we cannot hide. In sun and shade, 
They grow and thrive, a reminder of the world outside. With every leaf and every petal, a connection to the earth that we cannot hide. So let us tend to them with care and watch them grow with joy and pride, for in their growth and beauty, we find a connection to the earth that we cannot hide. Thank you so much for watching.